Watch the lady. All right, Waylon. Who got the crowbar and the hammer? Fragile. I. It must be Italian. I think that says fragile. There could be anything in there. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Welcome to Retro Bassin. If this is your first time here and you like to fish at old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from the glory days of bass fishing. Consider subscribing and definitely hit that bell icon, otherwise, you won't know when we post a new video like this one. Today on Retro Bassin, we have. I think it's gonna be a pretty epic mail call. So this is gonna be, uh, we just have one package here that comes to us courtesy of my buddy Todd Keaton up in Virginia. Um, before we get started, I do wanna give a little shout out to Todd. Todd definitely fishes it old school like we do here at Retro Bassin, and he's got a great Facebook page called The Tackle Box. I will drop a link in the description below. Definitely check it out. Um, he's doing some pretty cool stuff with flip tail lures these days and there's a bunch of just good old timey content on the page. So you may recall a little while back I packaged up some of my uh, vintage Daiwa reels for Todd to soup up. Um, you know I do love fishing at old school but I gotta be honest with you sometimes when you're fishing with a reel or a rod combo that is at this point what 40 years old stuff gets a little rough. So Todd had been giving me a little bit of heck about the way that my reel sounded in a couple of our episodes. So I decided to take him up on his offer and I sent him a few reels as well as some old timey baits. However, I think uh, in this package, Todd has probably outdone me. So this first off looks like a rod package. I did not send Todd a single rod. So I have no idea uh, what is going on here. <laughs> But it's definitely fragile inside. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. We got a note. I, I am so pumped. So a little sidebar. I have been sitting on this package for like five days. Um, work's been like a total nightmare. I have not had a chance to film very much, as you guys know. And I was saving this box for this special episode. So it's been driving me nuts. This has been sitting in the office for a couple days. It's Saturday. I am glad to finally open her up. Okay, retro brother. <laughs> One good turn deserves another. I hooked you up with four rods. What? Two cranking, one worm, and one slider worm combo. Oh! Todd and I have been talking about slider worms a pretty good bit. Oh, that is awesome. So the combo is from 1985. The Samurai is 1988. And the two combos, uh, 1983 for the blue and 1990 for the black. Um, I put backing on the spinning reel for you. I also enclosed a bag of reel shims. Uh, I make them from stainless steel. So you don't have to use tape on the feet anymore. Okay, totally. So the old school rod and reel combos, I have those five foot, six inch pistol grips. They're actually a little bit loose. It's just that one screw to connect it. So Todd was talking about these reel shims. That's gonna be right on the bottom of the reel seat. That's gonna be huge, because right now I'm kind of ghetto rigging it with some tape. Okay, so two rods already have them on. Enjoy the baits and hope to see the stuff in future videos. Tight lines and God bless, Todd Keaton. Ah, all right, buddy. Well, <laughs> I'm pumped. <laughs> I'm done talking, I'm just gonna open this stuff up now. Okay, so this box looks familiar. This is my Daiwa PMF 10S. I love this reel. This is one of my older original reels. It had been sounding a little bit rough. But, ooh. Oh. The old Procaster. I think this is probably the first reel featured on Retro Bassin way back 
what, 13 months ago at this point. So I've used the heck out of this thing as of late. It's been on the shelf for a while, as you guys probably noticed, because it was just sounding brutal. Um, ooh, that's, ah, awesome. Okay, another familiar box. So this one I sent Todd, this is my PL Daiwa 1500. This one I never got singing right, to be honest with you. It was always a little bit tough for me. That sounds nice. Let's see. Here's the test. Ooh. Oh, that's gonna be, oh, check that out. I am gonna get this bad boy spooled up ASAP and probably on the water like in the next 48 hours. Oh, thanks Todd, I appreciate it. I love these old reels, but I had trouble getting them served. So Todd, total, total lifesaver on both of those bad boys. This one is a special one. So this is my, Vintage Daiwa Millionaire Reel, which is another one that honestly I purchased online and it was never singing out of the box. But there we go. Oh. All right. All right, we gotta test this thing. Watch, if, if I backlash doing this, I'll be very upset. Sorry, Todd, in advance. Oh, that sounds awesome. So what Todd told me he did, by the way, a little pro hack, and honestly, I'm gonna have to get him to explain this a little bit better on the tackle box. I've never done this before. We talked about loading up a bait cast and reel. So you see that we've got just some standard monofilament on the top. He actually, on the bottom, puts some braid. And the reason being, according to Todd, is that that braid is lighter than the mono, and it means that the outside of the spool spins faster, which dramatically increases your casting distance. Pro tip that honestly, I don't know if you guys knew it, I never heard of loading up a bait caster before. Todd told me about it. So this will be the first time I have fished that way. Um, oh, this is, a, this is a great looking reel. I am so pumped to get this thing back out there. I'll give you guys a close up look of the Daiwa Millionaire. Oh, look at that. They didn't make these for long, but, and, and clearly it's like an Abu Garcia ambassador uh, sort of knockoff, but, ah, I love it. Man, I'm so glad I'm gonna be fishing Daiwas again, finally. I forgot how many reels I sent him, oh my goodness. <laughs> The retro arsenal was like in rough shape. I've got to be honest with you. Ooh. Okay, so this is another favorite reel of mine. This is my Daiwa Mag Force. Uh, cat number is HT1000. Just a pretty little reel. Look at that thing. All right, we'll do the old test on this bad boy. Yep. All right. I've got some spooling to do on these guys. Ah, oh, back in action. Okay, so these must be these real seats Todd's talking about. So check that out. So what that is, he just machines that himself. It's a probably a little piece of steel. And what that will do, what I was talking about with these reels is when you put them in a, uh, one of the old school pistol grip rods, they tend to rattle a little bit. And I was adding tape here to make it stick better or to sort of add some bulk to it. So what Todd recommended to do is you take this little piece of metal here, place it right underneath the reel seat, and that is gonna add just enough height to keep this bad boy from rattling around. So I will definitely be using these on all of my vintage rod and reel combos. All right, there's some rods. There's some baits. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Let's check this out. 
there were, uh, I can already tell you right now, that is going to be an epic haul. Oh. Uh, Alright, we got to get into this. The classic Cordell rattle spot in that half ounce. I love these classic lipless crankbaits. And one of the cool things about some of the older models is they definitely have a different sound than the newer baits. I always thought these vintage Cordells have more of a tinny, sort of high-pitched, honestly frantic sound than even that sort of, I guess, more dull rattle of a rattle trap. So I've always thought these had a nice tinny sound to it. I love this model, and I've also caught a ton with these suspending rattle spot. But I'm not going to open that one. Okay, ooh, what is this? Early 1970s Rebel Minnow. All right, so we've got a classic 1970s Rebel Minnow in a little bit of a silver rainbow trout pattern. Ooh, that is money. I fished a ton of red fins before. I have never fished this size of a Rebel Minnow. That looks like a four and a half, five incher right there. That little bad boy is gonna be money in springtime. Oh man, I'm totally gonna fish for that guy. Oh, Bomber Lure Company. And by the way, we're gonna be talking about Bomber real soon. Early 1980s Bomber. Yeah, the classic metal lip Bomber. Oh, I love this bait. If you guys saw our last episode, we actually did some catching on a Whopper Stopper Hellbender that has that similar metal heart-shaped lip. Todd said that he was going to send me the real deal, as he put it, the classic bomber. Oh, that's an awesome bait. It's such an iconic look. Honestly, you don't see a ton of metal lipped crankbaits anymore these days, but this is the classic, built out of the bomber factory. Somewhere in Texas, actually, and I think you can still go visit the, the Bomber logo right there. Oh, that's money, and that is going to catch. And it looks like he souped up the hooks for me, too. That's actually a good pattern. Nice little crawfish deal. I think I see another Bomber in here. Oh, I see a couple Bombers. Ooh. Okay, so here's a mid-1970s Bomber. And I don't know if this one will be wood or plastic. Okay, so still a plastic model, but definitely a different plastic. There is something I like, guys, about that 1970s plastic. I don't know if it's the asbestos they put in it or what, but it's got a different hardness to it. It's got a different sound for sure. Um, that is a classic. Plastic bomber, heart-shaped lip, sun. That's gonna catch. And here's another early 1970s bomber in a color that honestly is gonna be way too pretty to throw. Wow, look at that. So that is like a purple. Um, I gotta get this rubber band off. Oh, check that out, guys. So that is like purple sparkle on the sides. Got some nice silver bars and goes right into this yellow belly. Woo, son, that is money. And I am gonna be fishing with that. I lied, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I gotta fish with that. Oh, heading. Whoa, in a uh, crazy color. Holy smokes. I wish we had like a live chat going on. You guys could try to guess the lures as I pull them out of here. So this is actually the big dog of the Head and Lucky 13. Man, I have caught some fish on this bait before. Usually the smaller one, but I kind of like the look of this bigger one. And this is a sweet, sweet little color. Ooh, look at that. That is like a copper chrome. Oh, ho. Woo! That's a good looking bait too. And son, that'll catch. Oh man. But that's almost too pretty to fish too. I hate to say it. 
And there you go, you can see on the bottom, it says Hedden Lucky 13. I'm gonna need like a bigger tackle box. Oh my goodness. Okay. Pose Super Cedar 1990. This is gonna be probably like the old David Fritz special here, huh? So check this dog out. I love Pose. So we've got a little crankbait uh, tackle box walkthrough coming up. I'm gonna be talking about some of my old Pose, but uh, I don't know why. There's always been just a super special place in my heart for this line of baits. I don't know if it's that classic Pac-Man style eye or that cedar smell, but it's just a solid, chunky, silent, deep diving, fish catching, son of a gun. And that's got like the good lip on it too. By the way, when Yakima bought these things, the lips just went to. So that's uh that'll catch. Woo! Okay, another pose here. Oh, this is a color. Holy smokes. So we've got a pose from 1995. Same deal, pose 400. Uh, I got a feeling this is a silent model. And by the way, with pose, you can tell if they're silent or not because they literally would just, these are solid cedar. So they would have to drill in a hole in the side and place a little rattle and you can feel it. So that bad boy is a solid. So they've got, they had a color called Spook, which was like basically this with a white top. So I don't know what this one's called. It's got that little chartreuse on the top. But son, that's awesome looking. All right, more pose. Who can name this bait in three notes? Ah! All right, who can open this bait in three notes? Jeez. Retro ER, going to the ER, because I don't know how to open boxes. Ooh, who remembers this bait? I know one YouTuber does, by the name of Rick Clun. Classic RC1. Oh man, the classic coffin lip. Winner of multiple Passmaster Classics. Man, that's a good bait too. I just love the shape of that. I know that the style of this was borrowed from like the old Steve Blazer um, crankbaits back in the day. But man, I love Pose. I had, a, I had a ton of these baits. Let's see if this guy's a right rattler or not. All right, silent bait. And it's got that really cool coffin lip, which causes it to do some really erratic bounces. This, this bait, if you dig it into stuff, if you bounce it off rocks or bounce it off timber, it does some funky stuff after the bounce. The old Rick Clun special. Nice, thanks man. And that one's sort of in a uh, bait fish pattern. I forget what this one's called too. I probably should have researched that. That's awesome though. All right, got a few more. Ooh, okay. So late 1970s Rebel Mini R. So of course you all know the story of the Cordell Big O um, and just about every crankbait company followed suit with their own alphabet letter crankbait. So definitely modeled off the Big O. It's got a square lip to it. This thing will be money in three to five foot of water, just bouncing off trees and stumps. Woo! Good sound and rattle. Yeah, I'll throw this bad boy. Awesome. The Mini R. If it's Rebel, it's cool. Okay, so two more Rebels from the 1970s, the Humpback. So my first exposure to the Humpback is actually in a gimmick lore, the Joe Camel, like Rebel Humpback. I don't know if that lore came up first and then they made a real line of it or, or vice versa. They just happened to design a lore that looked like a camel. But oh, I've never seen the Humpback in that little size. Look at that. Oh, that is going to be a sweet little finesse crankbait. I'll probably throw that on a spinning rod. Oh, man, but on a pressured lake like we have in Texas. 
clear water, that thing in the seven to eight foot range will be money. Got it in silver. Got it in gold. So I'm pretty sure like Todd cleaned out his own tackle box with this mail call. Oof. Oh, one more. Oh, 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 oh. Early 1970s Rebel Shad. I do not have one of these. I've been scoping these things out for a while. They are actually super tough to find. This almost is like the Rebel version of the Storm Thin Fin. I'm going to show you the profile of this bait. So, first off, classic Rebel lines. I don't know why. I just love that Rebel pattern. It's got the, sort of that check mark. It's sort of that hash mark of a silver side to it. Shad profile. Check that out. Ooh, that's going to have a tight little wiggle, isn't it? Man, I might be throwing this thing on Monday. That's a good looking bait. Whew. Wow. Oh, I think I know what we have here. Some of you may remember a little while back we did an episode on a previously discontinued worm called the flip tail. A little bit of bass fishing history for you guys that has to do with this particular bait. The first ever bass caught in a BASS tournament was caught by none other than Bill Dance. And rumor has it that he caught it on one of these baits, a seven and a half inch blue flip tail worm. Flip tail it recently got back in business. They actually started up a production again um, with John Party, kind of taking over his dad's old molds, doing some really cool stuff. They've got colors super dialed in and they can even do custom colors for you, which is pretty cool. So I had bought a few and oh, son, we have got some nice ones. Look at that purple. Oh, man. That is like an electric old school seven and a half inch son of a gun. Wow, that's gonna work. A solid purple flip tail. Oh, check out that green. Oh man, that is not a new school green at all. Look at that. That is like a creamy, translucent. That'll work. Classic red. A worm color, by the way, that you do not see too often, but I still catch them on red all the time. And I know Todd does too. Ooh, okay. Check out that. That's almost like a root beer, sort of scuppernog color. That's awesome. And there she is, my friends. That is the first bait to ever catch a bass in a BASS tournament. Seven and a half inch blue flip tail worm. Check this thing out. Yep. Oh, look at that. So what I love about flip tails is that really flat, broad tail, similar to a jelly worm, but actually a little bit thinner. They've got a really nice segmented body, awesome head and egg sac in which to sink a hook really well. Ah, oh, what an awesome bait. I actually blew through. I had some of these from John. I ended up blowing through them all, so uh, I am super pumped to be getting a few more, and these are gonna be on the water with me come Monday. And now it's time for the good stuff. Ah, uh, <laughs> so when Todd told me he was gonna send me four rods, it kind of blew my mind, so I am, got them unwrapped, and I'll show you what we got. Oh, this is gonna be some fun stuff. So the first thing we got here is this. I think this is the slider combo that Ty was talking about. So it is a Daiwa rod. Looks like it's model SK-10E with this classic, awesome looking Daiwa reel, RG-1300. Oh man, what a fun spinning combo. I cannot wait to get that bad boy out there. That thing is awesome. Okay, so next we've got a Daiwa. Ah, uh, it's all about Daiwas today. Uh, Apollo 1690CGP Classic. Uh, look at that sweet looking pistol grip handle on that bad Oscar. This is my favorite, that five and a half foot pistol grip rod. 
This is gonna go awesome with one of those reels. Ooh, the Daiwa Samurai Power Mesh. My buddy Jay had one of these. And that's more of the Procaster sort of team Daiwa pistol grip handle. Still that, but it had that nice foam to it. Um, ooh, that feels really nice. <laughs> oh, the old school Daiwa Apollo. These are super hard to find. And that's also got the foam handle, but that's got like a nice, nice feel to it. Um, that is going to be a spinnerbait slinging rod for me, no doubt. Wow. It's going to be nice to have some true Daiwa combos. Holy smokes. <sighs> so that was clearly one of the most epic mail calls I think you could hope to have on a show. Um, Todd, brother, you hooked us up big time. So everybody out there, again, a couple links in the description below. Definitely check out Todd's Facebook page, The Tackle Box. I'll be over there later this week, um, probably with some photos of some different stuff in this unboxing. Also, too, I'll probably put some of the pictures of this different gear on the Retro Bassin Instagram page. So until next time, keep those Daiwas a turning. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.